Hello, welcome to Unrestricted View Film Festival. And today with Meet the um, Director and Actors, we're joined by Maureen O'Connell, Stephen Neeson, and Tim Casey from the fantastic feature Spa Weekend. Hi, guys. Hey. Thank you for having us. Not at all, not at all. Now, um, first of all, uh, where did the idea come from? Where did it start? ask you first, Maureen? Where, where did um, the idea for the film come from? Well, so I co-wrote it with a brilliant writer called Carl Argue. Um, I rang him up, I was in England, and um, I rang him up with uh, the general idea of um, two actors trying to get out of the town and go camping, and then they get <laughs> followed by this crazy uh, drug lord slash landlord um, of Stoney. And um, the, the two main characters are called Joe, who I play, and Stoney, who Stephen Neeson plays. Uh, were the two then and out actors. Um, so then I was just chatting to Carl about that and then he came up with some really great ideas for scenes. And then um, there was the scene that I obviously wanted to get in, get in which was the real life scene um, that happened to me as a bully by theatre director. So I wanted to get that in. And uh, Tim Casey plays that bullying uh, theatre director uh, brilliantly. And um, so how you can kind of, if you stand up for yourself, you, you can get uh, into a lot of trouble, especially if you're a young actress and uh, they can blacklist you and uh, you can not get any auditions which is really annoying so it's about her journey then uh, trying to come back from that within within a a, a comedy like a slacker comedy which yeah. I, I like i just love slacker comedies i love kind of american humor so it's, it's kind of wacky and um yeah just just slacker comedy and so uh, carl like those ideas so we wrote scenes back and forth and i, I made it clear that i was going to be the director so i'd have to have the authority to cut things if I needed to, you know, if I just felt so, you know, uh, and then he was okay with that. And then I just said, I'm just going to shoot this <laughs> with no money. And so that's what I did. Fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you just have to do it, don't you? You have to go, right, how much money have we got? I've got five or I've got ten. All uh, right, let's yeah. make it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so I was going to sort of come on to later, but because I was going to ask, is it was it a, a personal experience? Um, so you obviously said it was. You know, you were sort of bullied basically in the yeah. in the acting, and which you know happens a lot. We know that happens. So you know, I mean, yeah. so yeah, um, I mean, a great cathartic way of dealing with that, I suppose, by by sort of outing outing yeah. it, you know, and, and beautifully wrapped in a comedy film. But um, yeah, I mean, that that must have been tough. So, um, he was really tough because, well, the, his, his boss basically he said those words, those exact words that are in the film. He said that I have no power and that he has all the power. I think he was trying, he was trying to say it in a nice way, kind of like, you know, you just screwed yourself over by standing up to him because that's not what actors are supposed to do. They're supposed to cry and say, You're a genius, and uh, I, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong or whatever. <laughs> okay. I don't, you know, I'm not going to say that, not to someone like that. So, um, I, uh, but he, he did say those words to me and I think he, I think, you know, he, he meant it in a good way. Like this, this is just real life. This is how you kind of do and you, you've no power. But I objected to that still. He shouldn't have said that to me because it's not true. And so, and it's not true of anyone and uh, especially actresses. So um, uh, I thought, well, screw that. You know, I was a filmmaker before I arrived here uh, as just an actor. So I can, I can create my own work. Uh, so that's what I did. It, so so it, it's, it's kind of a story within a story film within the film kind of thing. So uh, yeah, Joe kind of gets up and she, at the end of it, she, she's making her own films. She gets bullied by the other director, but she, then she makes her own films. Yeah. And that's what I was doing as well. So it was yeah. kind of an answer to that, a creative answer to that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I, I love the little autobiography sort of bit of it. It's a very nice. Um, so um, let's move on. Um, Stephen, um, how, so how did you get involved? Um, well, I've known Mo for many years. We used to go to the attic studio together where actors, writers and directors would meet up on a regular basis. It was a wonderful avenue uh, to find new opportunities and meet great people. But um, she contacted me uh, asking, I believe an, another actor had dropped out of the Stony Row. Was it the night before shooting, Mo? Yeah, well, he, um, yeah, he, yeah, it was, we, we were going to shoot and like, I, like I knew that we were going to shoot it over quite some time because I didn't have much money to shoot it all in like, say, three or four weeks. Couldn't possibly do that. So I needed full commitment though, even though it kind of, 
would be like every second week we'd be shooting a scene. Uh, it would be easy going, but if you committed to do the, do the date, you had to do it. There was no way or else morale would drop and then you'd lose the whole thing. Mm. So that, the, he, he was late to a couple of things and then he said, oh, I can't make it tomorrow, by the way, at the last second. So then I was like, okay, so I'll just, I'll just get someone else. Cause we, we hadn't shot anything. Uh, we shot one scene with him. So, so I went back and reshot them then with uh, Stephen and uh, yeah, got that cafe scene done with Stephen then. And yeah, then Stephen was stony. Yeah. But, but Stephen's awesome. St Stephen's a brilliant, brilliant actor. So, and actually, I felt that he 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 suited the role more anyway because there's something really nice and gentle about Stephen. Kind of, he's a, he's a, was, he was a great foil to me because we're kind of like a you know comedic duo. So um, his his gentleness, like not everyone would take Joe. You know, <laughs> she could be quite feisty. Whereas Stoney had that gentleness that I felt. Oh, this this would be great comedically, and uh, he's such a natural actor anyway. So. I was actually delighted to have him. Yeah, well, sometimes these things happen for the best, don't they? You, see, you, um, you know, and the, and the, the chemistry between the two of you was great. I thought, you know, you were, that was a, that was a great sort of double act going on there. It was really good. Um, let's bring Tim in. Tim, so how did you get involved in the project? Uh, well, I did a, another short film with Mo uh, sometime before. That was Proclaim. I don't know if you've seen that. It's uh, it's about the the, the printing of. Uh, the 1916 proclamation uh, and I think it's it's a little it's a gem of a film really from every point of view and um, she yeah I think you asked me would I audition I can't remember actually uh, for this one and um, and then you know Mo told me who the, this character was and it was fascinating um, and of course I, I mean I could I I, I you know, just having been working for a good while, I know that kind of story, you know, and I know how there are bullies in, especially in acting schools, mm -hmm. who just like to uh, throw their authority around. And I thought it was kind of brilliant that, that, um, <laughs> that she was kind of getting her revenge in a way, you know, in this cinematic form. Um, and it's, 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 I, 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 I just love the humor of it as well, you know, and uh, and then when I actually saw the film, I was I was amazed, you know, because, you know, you, you just do this part of it and that's it for a long time. And then eventually you see it. And it was so funny. Um, I, you know, it was just it was a joy to watch, actually. You know, I actually enjoyed watching it, even though I was in it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is a joy to watch. It really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Mo, um, you said obviously you couldn't do a, a film it in all one lump, you know. Um, uh, yeah. So, how long it, did it take to put it together or to shoot it? Um, well, uh, so initially I went, oh, this will take us three months to shoot. <laughs> and then three months came, and then I was like, oh, it'll be six months. And then <laughs> six months came, and I was like, it might be a year, everyone, so just, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yeah, so what I did was, um, so I, I have to pay my rent, my bills, and it's obviously really expensive in Dublin as it is in London as well. London's crazy as well. Apparently those cities are crazy uh, to live in as an actor, you know. Um, but uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd pay them off. And then if I had like a hundred euro left over, I put that aside for a scene and I choose a scene. Uh, I'd rehearse it. Thank Christ I had these lovely actors because they would rehearse for free at mine. I'd make sandwiches or whatever and coffee and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I, like I couldn't, you know, no one, no one, no one was paid, you know, and so they're just really lovely and so talented as well. So it's really lucky. And uh, so we'd rehearse it over and over again because uh, it's all an awful lot of comedy is about rhythm, you know, and uh, getting that right. And then um, what would I do? I'd uh, uh, sometimes do a recce, you know, people like, you know, if the location needed it, I'd bring people out, you know, kind of go, well, this. This might, might be slightly tricky. Here's the shot list and stuff. So let's just make sure because once we got to location, I didn't want to waste people's time because um, they're not being paid. So I want them to enjoy it. Yes. So if they're rehearsed and they're good to go, then we just do it. And people are giggling then afterwards after you, you know, you yell cut and you know people are enjoying it. Thank God. You get them good food, pay for the parking, the travel. And then uh, I always finished before I needed to. So I, I would always allocate three or four hours to each scene. And I would always finish by 15 minutes before. So that just kept everyone's morale up. 
Yeah. And it was like an enjoyable thing to do. And then they could just go home and, you know, yeah. maybe get bald another two weeks or something. Well, that's great. And, and good on you for, for holding that together because it's very hard, I think, to hold a project together for so long, trying to pull each string in, you know, and you did that. So well done. Yeah. You know, that's, that's um, fantastic. So what's next? What's coming up next for each of you? Hmm. Um, let's go to Tim. Tim. What, what, yeah. What um, well, I, I was, uh, oh, good question. Um, I mean, there were a couple, there were a couple of projects in the pipeline, but I don't know if they're happening anymore. Uh, one was, um, God, I can't even remember the name, but it's a BBC thing that's shooting here that I had a small part in. Uh, and then another thing was possibly a tiny role in a big feature film, but um, I, everything is on hold, so I don't know really. Uh, at the moment, I'm just kind of doing, I'm actually translating books at the moment from German into English. Uh, that's keeping me sane, I think. And I am also taking part in quite a few Zoom play readings, you know, just to, yeah, 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 with, with, with Remo as well, actually, uh, with yeah. different companies. Mm. Which which is actually, yeah, it's quite good. And I did a bit for Bloomsday yesterday, just another Zoom thing, you know. Um, uh, we did a dramatization of uh, a short story by Joyce Ivy Day at the committee room, which was nice. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's really, it is kind of, as you know, it's quite frustrating at the moment. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. How, how about you, Stephen? Um. I'm in pretty much the same boat as Tim. Uh, I've had a very interesting offer for a project I'd love to do, but um, it, it remains to be seen whether that's going ahead. So just hopefully waiting yes. at the moment. I think that's just true of most things at the moment, isn't it? It's just sort of taking it week by week to see what happens and you know how we can sort of make films and, and do stuff sensibly with the distancing rules, you know, but, but you know, fingers crossed, hopefully we can do that soon. How about you, Mo? Are you writing anything else or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm writing loads of stuff. I, um, I, got, I got funding, hooray, hey. from, <laughs> finally, yeah. from the Irish Film Board. Uh, they're called Screen Ireland, so I'll be doing a short, and that's been put on hold. We managed to shoot that in May. Right. Uh, so hopefully it's uh, gonna be either July or August. Uh, it has to have that. A court film premiere, a film festival premiere, so we have to get it done. Um, that's in November. So, um, and then I got another funding from Screen Ireland uh, for a there's a, a short I made years ago called Girls, kind of um, social realist drama about young girl violence kind of thing. And uh, so I, I developed that into a feature uh, treatment along with a co-writer who's brilliant called Gemma Cray, and it's called the Spotlight Award. And so they're going to help us develop that into a feature film and pay us, which is amazing. 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 So. Oh, wages. Oh, they great. Um, that's fantastic. All right, guys, I'm just going to ask you one question each before we finish. Um, I'm going to ask you, as, as the director, Mo, um, who's your favorite director? Um, oh, God, so many. Probably Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> But I, I love him, but I also think he's really funny. And I, I don't think an awful lot of people see that, they see his humour. I think it's very dark humour. Um, but I think, like, I think Barry Lyndon is really funny. Um, people find it very slow moving and, and serious and stuff, but I actually think he's, um, I think he's obviously just brilliant. Like, he's not, you know, yeah. there are no words for him, but he's also funny, maybe. Okay, that's great. And uh, Stephen, who is your favourite actor? Um, well, I'm probably going to think of someone later and go, why didn't I say that? But at the moment, I recently saw a documentary on Spielberg, and he is my favorite kind of director because he's told big special effects stories and small character-driven stories. But I think every film Spielberg has made has had really magnificent characters that you empathize with. And I think that is the most important thing in any movie. Uh, you can make a incredibly big budget movie with badly written characters, 
And to me, that means you failed. You can make a movie with no budget, like us. Uh, and if if the audience is interested in the characters, I think you've you've accomplished your goals. And that's what any film should be aiming for, in my opinion. Absolutely, that's great. And uh, Tim, can I ask you, what's your favourite film? The impossible question. Oh. I realise that's something that probably changes, like you know, from week to week. But um, yeah, say this week, what's your favourite film? What's the first one that comes to mind? Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's my weekend. I don't know if you know that one. <laughs> yeah, good answer. <laughs> No, oh reason. my God. Very good. Uh, no, but seriously, well, that is serious, actually. But anyway, uh, at the moment, God, well, at the moment, I'm actually, um, I'm, um, oh my God, um, I'm, I'm hooked on Ozark at the moment, which isn't a film. I don't know well, if that's, you've that's the, nice. yep. the Netflix uh, thing, and it's, it's, it's just watched the third series, and oh, it's just incredible, you know? <laughs> Um, it, so I've, got a, I've got that to look forward to. Yeah, no, it's just it's just the characterizations, you know, and and uh, uh, these kind of um, characters who are damaged goods, mm. and yet who are trying to make the best of the situation, and it only gets worse and worse. I mean, it's 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 quite over the top in a way, but uh, very believable as well at the same time, and. Uh, I'm still reeling from episode 10 last night. I'm kind of watching it slowly because I don't really want, I know some people binge watch and I can't. It just never happens. So it's like every few days, maybe watch an episode. Uh, and episode nine, I was going, this can't be happening. <laughs> <laughs> and episode 10. <laughs> but anyway. It's brief, isn't yeah. it? When you finish it. Yeah. Oh no, what am I going to watch? Um, yeah. Okay, brilliant. So Spa Weekend is on uh, Friday the 17th of July. You can get tickets at unrestrictedview.co.uk. Um, straight after this, we're going to have a trailer from our sponsors for their upcoming show, which is on tonight, actually, Agatha Raisin. Um, so, yeah, watch that. And please uh, buy tickets for the wonderful Spa Weekend. And thanks very much, guys. It was lovely to chat. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Thanks a million. Death threats juicy enough for you? I hope you're not the amateur busybody that the police say you are. Right. Well, I'll show them. I thought I might take up a new hobby. The mating dance. Hot and reckless. I have something to confess. Um, Deadly. We all set on the plan? All clear. Mingle. Eyes. Ears. Rogering that. I can assure you that I can get to the bottom of this. We're never so professional, Faye.